1492. The year was 1492. King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella, as the rulers of Spain, provided Christopher Columbus with three ships. They gave him money to pay for crews to sail them, plus food and water for the long voyage. Columbus was to sail his fleet westward to the Indies. There he would trade European goods for rare spices, gold, and other treasures that the king and queen desired. Columbus's three ships had names, the Nina, the Pinta, and the Santa Maria. Can you find the smallest ship in the picture? That is the Nina. The middle-sized one, the Pinta, was the fastest of the three. Columbus chose to sail on the largest ship, the 120-foot-long Santa Maria, or St. Mary. Proud of all three vessels and wanting his voyage to succeed, he was determined to choose the best sailors that he could find in all of Spain. Columbus was confident that he could attract the men he needed and convince them to go on the voyage. True, he had to paint word pictures of warm, beautiful lands where gold and rare spices were so common that a person could hardly avoid tripping over them. He suggested, without actually promising, that his crew would return to Spain so rich that they could all live in grand homes and wear fine clothes. Another thing he told them was quite true. Queen Isabella had offered a huge cash reward to the first person who sighted the Indies. Perhaps it was this offer that was most convincing of all to the sailors. One by one, Columbus found his men, and they agreed to join his expedition. At last, everyone and everything was ready. On August 3, 1492, the Nina, the Pinta, and the Santa Maria sailed out of their Spanish harbor, bound for a possible fortune in the Indies. The sailors were proud and excited. But when they passed the last familiar lands, the Canary Islands, and found themselves in open sea, out of sight of any land, their excitement began to turn to uncertainty and then to fear. Columbus tried to calm their fears. Both Columbus and the crew were feeling less safe the longer they sailed in the open sea. As days passed and then weeks, Columbus's reassurance was no longer enough to keep the crew from becoming seriously frightened. Days and days and long nights passed. The Nina, the Pinta, and the Santa Maria had been sailing westward out at sea for weeks now. They had entered a part of the ocean in which long, thick seaweed covered the surface in every direction for as far as the eye could see. This is a good sign, Columbus thought. It may mean we are nearing land. But then the winds died down to nearly nothing and the sails hung lifelessly from the masts. The three ships crept forward and sometimes stopped moving altogether. Each day was like the one before, and Columbus and the sailors wondered, Will we ever get out of this seaweed? Will the wind ever change and come back to us? At last, after days and days, the wind picked up again, and they sailed free of the clinging seaweed and back into the open sea. Still, the sailors worried, and they no longer bothered to hide their doubts from Columbus. When will we find the lands you promised us? they asked. Soon, he told them, trying to look confident. Soon, we will get there. But as he said this, Columbus, too, had his own doubts. But the sailors were tired of sailing and were losing hope. They came to Columbus one day and begged him to turn the ships around. Give me three more days, he said. If we have not seen land by then, we will turn around. But the days passed with no sign of progress. Then on the third day, a sailor called out, There is something floating in the water up ahead. Fish it up out of the water, Columbus ordered. Some sailors tossed a net over the side and drew up the object. It is a stick, cried one of the sailors. It looks as if someone has carved its sides with a knife. That must mean there's land ahead and someone is living there, the others said excitedly. The next day, several sailors saw branches with green leaves floating on the surface of the water. Then the crews of all three ships saw a large flock of land birds flying overhead. We must be getting close to land, the men cried with great excitement. The birds circled above as if examining the three ships, then turned back in the direction from which they had come. Follow them, Columbus ordered. The birds will lead us to land. Soon the salty sea breezes began to carry a new scent their way. Could we be smelling the spices of Asia up ahead? The sailors asked one another, growing more and more excited. But still, they saw no land. On the evening of Thursday, October 11th, Columbus ordered the ships to drop anchor, something they had not done on the entire voyage. If we really are close to land, he thought, we might be carried by the current up against the shore in the darkness and never know until it's too late. That night, walking the deck of the Santa Maria, he saw a light in the distance. 
It is too far away to be coming from the Pinta, he thought, knowing that the ship was anchored farther ahead of his own, and the light is too low in the sky to be a star. It must be a fire set by some human being on a shore up ahead. A few hours later, in the early morning hours of October 12, 1492, Columbus heard the sound of a cannon. It is coming from the Pinta, he thought. They must have sighted land. Waiting impatiently as the early light of dawn increased, he stared ahead until he saw what the sailors on board the Pinta had seen, a long, low shore on which the ocean waves were smoothly breaking. The men of the Pinta were cheering, and a moment later, cheering broke out aboard the Nina and the Santa Maria too. Dressing formally for the occasion, and carrying a long flagpole bearing the flag of Spain, Columbus and some of his men rowed over the waves in a small boat to the shore of this new land. Stepping out into the water, Columbus and the sailors stepped ashore. By his calculations, Columbus believed he had landed on the continent of Asia in the Indies. Then he plunged the flagpole into the sandy shore and said, On behalf of their majesties, I, Christopher Columbus, claim this land and all that is in it for Spain.